Welcome back to Lucy, the attorney she wished for. Oh, last time. We actually got Lucy out of the shop. Pay for or pay for repairs and everything. Let's continue it and reach a conclusion, so let's do that, shall we? Soon enough, the streets became immersed in the orange glow of the evening sun. The scenery was changing more slowly than usual today. Maybe it's because I've been carrying Lucy on my back. That's not that a lot of time had passed. Winter was just on its way. As evidenced by these increasingly shorter days. Lucy hasn't said anything for a while. I still glance at her wondering if she's asleep, but she's not. She appears to be lost in thought, staring at everything in sight. She looks like a child inside a pleasant dream. I can see her eyes sparkling. Is it really that fascinating? This place. I can't see if I agree with that. Unlike downtown, there aren't many distractions here to keep us busy. Nor are we near any beautiful landscape. We're just walking a plain old street that you can find anywhere. What part of this place do you find marvelous? Everything? I couldn't relate to the sensation she just described. Master? What is it? What's 
with you all, old son. I'm caught off guard by the unexpected apology. Had she really done anything wrong? You know, as I'm looking at this picture, and I'm looking at the character, the the character I'm portraying as, I'm actually feeling that right now. I sound annoyed, I sound pissed, I sound very irritated. It, it, it's just, the day, as days are going by, it just feels like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I found it strange how Lucy was telling me what kind of person she was supposed to be. If anyone other than Lucy had told me the same thing, I probably had laughed at them. Anyone by himself will never be able to find out what kind of person he truly is. Sitting in front of a mirror reveals all the flaws of your body. Sitting in front of a person reveals all the flaws in your personality. If you ever want to find out about yourself, it needs to be reflected back to you by something else. That is why attempting to describe your own personality is the same as describing what kind of person you actually want to be. <sighs> It'd just be a bunch of pretentious nonsense. But this is only the case for humans. Lucy's an android. She's not human. That's why it doesn't sound strange coming from her. such a natural explanation about how she felt. She was happy to meet her first master. And she was happy to be able to finally move around again. You've never served anyone else before. So she's a new model that no one has ever touched. That line of thinking sounds dirty, but that's not what I mean. So that's what... Okay, Spaceport does that. Interesting.
They're probably just testing our abilities. In my mind, I found the whole scenario unsettling. To Lucy, however, it's a treasured memory of her past. But there is an important question yet to be answered. Then, why were you abandoned? I've always been meaning to ask her, but I can't easily bring myself to do so. I ask myself why. Maybe it's because I'm starting to care about this robot's feelings. I shake my head. That's just plain nuts. It's only because she sounds just like a real person. It's a dangerous thought. Let's get it out of my head. I blurt out the question. Then why were you abandoned? Lucy goes silent. Nothing is said for a while. The quietness stretches into an awkward silence. I start to regret asking the question. With those words, Lucy finally breaks the silence. I'm sorry if I'm doing a lot of sniffling. <sighs> Lucy goes silent once more. Then one day, she found herself left in the dust, is what she probably wanted to say. Maybe they didn't like something about her, or they found a significant flaw within her design. But I don't like the fact that they just tossed her aside after giving her so much love and attention. Aren't they being too inconsiderate? A small rage balls inside of me, directed at those cruel researchers with no sense of responsibility. When I regain my senses after a few seconds, I become surprised at how angry I was. What was I thinking? They were just throwing away a failed experiment. The object on my back is nothing more than an impressive fake. She's not real. She's not a living creature. It's only natural that useless machinery is thrown away. There's no need for me to be so angry. It's nothing. And stop measuring that all the time. Then it's in order. I order you not to measure anything from now on. There's another silence, but this time, not an unpleasant one.
I just can't seem to figure out this robot's train of thought. What? I don't remember talking to you like that. She's definitely going overboard with this. I just happened to notice her while casually passing by. They were only a few words which didn't contain any significant meaning. And it was only a moment's whim that I had taken her home. But I was surprised those simple actions were such a big help to the robot. <laughs> Being able to say the most embarrassing things without hesitation. I guess that's one of the advantages of being a robot. I could feel my face beginning to flush. I quickly duck in order to hide my embarrassment. I'm not really I'm not really acting this out, this is just me just coming out. <sighs> Shut up. I'm gonna make you pay for what you're worth, so you better be ready for it. What's so funny? Why do you keep laughing like that? It's creeping me out. <laughs> Lucy quietly rests her cheeks against my shoulder. The sensation of her scoff, uh, scoff, the sensation of her soft skin causes me to flinch. She feels very much different compared to this morning. It feels as if I'm carrying a real person on my back instead of a robot. I start to wonder what could be causing this difference in perception. Was it just a placebo effect? Or has something really changed since the morning? Oh, if you're hearing a lot of that going on in the background, I just have the I just have a lot of things going on going on in the back. One moment as I do this on camera. Something really did change. Was it me? Or the robot? I continued to ponder over the question on the way home. I never managed to come up with an answer.
You know this has been popping up for, oh, I don't know, quite some time because we have to remember the three laws of robotics. Thanks, Story. October 13th. Me. I unlocked the front door and entered the house. Unlike usual, I could sense someone's presence inside. I hear a couple of voices coming from the television inside the living room. My father appears to have returned home early. Makes me feel uneasy. I effortlessly remove my shoes using my own feet. Come to think of it, I was always home alone. It's been this way ever since I'd grown old enough to take care of myself. Before that, we used to have a housekeeper watching over the place. However, that was only until I began middle school. From then on, I was always by myself. I would eat breakfast alone, dinner alone. The cycle would repeat endlessly. I don't remember the last time all of us ate dinner together as a family. There's no such thing as a home-cooked meal in this household. I've eaten so many kinds of instant foods in my life that I've come to memorize every product of every brand. My father puts his work before family, and my new mother follows my father everywhere to support him while practically ignoring me. That's my family at this point. It feels out of place to see someone actually at home. My father's on the couch watching television when we can plainly see that the father is not there, but y you know what we mean. The TV's not on, you know, we don't see a body there, but you get wh where we're getting at, right? You're back. He doesn't even turn around to face me. It implies that he's not in a good mood. Yes, Father. You're very late. I checked the time. It wasn't actually that late. There are times when I'd be back much later. I wonder if this man even knows how old I am. Why have you been wandering around for so long? Don't you know that you'll be in college soon? I don't bother replying. Says the guy who never paid any attention to me. I think to myself, I don't get along too well with my father. Our relationship compares badly with other families. But that's to be expected. We've never spent much quality time together. Going to the zoo, playing soccer together. I don't even have fun, those fond memories of, that other kids my age probably had. My earliest memories are of my father's stern face. So it would be even more bizarre if we actually got along. As I stand in silence, the old man launches his next attack. Are you not listening to me? He still doesn't bother looking at me. I've gotten used to minding my own business. We keep to our own devices. To solve any conflicts within a family, you would normally need to sit down together and talk about it. But my father doesn't think there's any need for that. He thinks everything is fine the way it is. It'd really be painful to talk face to face with that man, though. I just stopped by somewhere on the way home. Yeah, I'll just deal with it with our usual exchange. So 
long as I don't make him angry, that's good enough for me. I just need to maintain the peace between us. It's always been this way. As usual, I try my best to not rock the boat. I don't know what you kids are up to these days. But remember that students like you should be studying. I'm saying this for your sake. So stop hanging around with those brats who only care about having fun. You can't afford to lose sight of your main goal. Stay focused. I'll be going to my room now. With that said, I try to make my escape. Our conversation would usually end about here. But Lucy, who'd been silent all this time, decides to whisper something in my ear. I hesitate whether I should tell her or not. In the end, I quietly whisper back. Yeah. Lucy taps on my shoulders. I have no choice but to grant her. I have no choice but to grant her wish. Maybe Lucy's voice had caught him by surprise. Because my father finally turned to face me. He's wearing a bewildered look. Who's your guest? With a wide smile, Lucy grabs onto the edges of her skirt. Then she performs a flawless curtsy that would make a princess envious. What? It's just a robot. His attitude completely changes. The sharpness in his voice penetrates every part of my body. But Lucy doesn't seem to notice. Or rather, she's pretending not to. She continues with a smile. I'm sorry, but there's nothing we need from a robot in this family. I suggest that you go look for somewhere else to stay. Uh oh. This is not looking good. Meanwhile, Lucy continues to ramble on, completely oblivious to what is about to happen. You know, I could picture him just looking at looking at my character. He's looking at me. And at the same time, it's like his eyes are looking at her and then back to me. And then my character's like He has a swallow, it's like If, if this is really an oh shit moment. She's talking as if she's about to become my personal tutor. Just where did you get this piece of junk? Get out of my sight! His angry outburst is as sudden as is intense. He catches Lucy off guard. 
She stumbles backwards in alarm. No surprises here. I saw all this coming from a mile away. It's a present from a friend. I lie instinctively. If I honestly tell him that I found her in trash, he definitely forced me to take her back there. I'll just say that I got it from Dr. Kears. My father knows his manners. There's no way he'll make me throw away a present. <laughs> really? You haven't stopped being a troublemaker since you were little. What have I always told you? Robots are ruining society. Did you forget about all of that? My father has always been like this. Robots are becoming increasingly more common. They're gradually making their way into our daily lives. But my parents consider them as intruders infiltrating human society. They are unable to catch up with the shifts in technology while they refuse to let go of their traditional ways. They simply refuse to coexist with robots. So that's where he got it from. It's, it's now making sense. Thanks to that, I grew up hearing nothing but bad things about robots. But what's wrong with keeping one around the house? What's wrong, you ask? I've read that most families own androids nowadays. Why can't we just keep one around for convenience? I've clearly just added fuel to the fire. Convenience! Think of the type of people that care about convenience! Convenience makes us lazy! And when we're lazy, our minds don't work properly. Convenience makes our minds weak. It's obvious how they live the rest of their lives. Without realizing that they're hopelessly lazy, they'll just end up living a meaningless existence. I've already lost count of how many times I heard this from him. Today's lecture is very B. It goes from A to Z, by the way. I'm so sick of this. I just want to wrap up this conversation so I can leave as soon as possible. Anyway, I've accepted it already, so we should keep it. I'm the one who's going to be using it, so why do you care? And who's going to be the one to pay for the electricity? Who taught you to be so selfish? It's like calling them. That's why calling the kettle black, isn't it? I'm starting to reach my limit. Come on. I want to leave. Then I'll pay for it. I can get a part-time job. A job! You're going to get a job! You're going to work when you should be studying? Yes. Do you even realize how important this phase in your life is? These years in high school could decide the rest of your future. With whose permission are you planning to work? Do you really expect to be able to take after me without any effort? Kids like you should be studying! Just keep your mouth shut and study! Well, I'll pay you back when I grow up, so just leave me alone, damn it! I scream at the top of my lungs. His eyes went in shock. That was to be expected. I've never raised my voice in front of my own parents before. <sighs> Let me tell you sometimes, that is that feels so liberating. You can't do this. You can't do that. Then just what the heck do you expect me to do? I'm so furious that I can almost feel steam rising from my head. 
At the same time, my father's eyes quickly now and began to burn with rage. Time slows down. I'm left struggling to process what what had just happened. That was a slap in the face. I know that was. I stand in place, holding my sore cheeks as my, as I stare at my father in shock. Not knowing what to do, Lucy is fidgeting non-stop. Oh yeah, this is a very abusive family. Just where did you learn to be so stubborn? I never raised you this way! Shocked and humiliated, I can no longer calm my fiery soul. I turn around and stomp off toward my room. I pull Lucy along with me. Mister! Hesitating, Lucy eventually makes a short bow to my father and trails along. Behind me, I can hear my father yelling. But I shut it all out as my blind rage is nearly overpowering. That's definitely me, all right. That that is definitely me right now. That that is definitely how I'm I'm actually kind of feeling. In my current situation, that is how I'm feeling. And I hate that feeling. Because those who know me, when I get in a certain mood, like I'm angry, depressed, frustrated, any, anything that just feels so negative, so fierce, it's going to come out. You know, I can't ignore it any longer. It's like when things happen and I'm trying to tolerate it, I can only tolerate it to the point in which there is, you know, there there is that that jar, you know. It's like everything that is like bubbling up and just keep bubbling up and bubbling up. You, you remember like uh, the Ghostbusters 2 where the red slime was in a jar and... You know, it fed off of negative negativity. It fed off of negative energy. That's pretty much how I'm currently feeling right now. And to say, you know, oh, well, you know, we need to... I said, no, you need to know. Because I don't like where it's going. And I need to share this. Because currently, in my present state... I am I am not really feeling all that good. I'm trying, but my current state is just it's I'm being absolutely 100% real. <sighs> Entering my room, I lock the door behind me. I hear my father yelling as he continues banging on my door for a while. I'm not sure how many minutes have gone by. It feels like an eternity. Even if I block my ears, I can still sense the floor shaking. I curl up my body and wait for the moment to pass. slowly ticks away. After a long while, I can cover my ears. The noises have stopped, and I finally begin to relax. As my head eventually clears up, I realize what I've done. I finally lost control. I've yelled at my father for the first time in my life. It's been a while since... The last time I was hit by my father. It was like the rupturing of a dam after so much pressure and strain. Thinking back, it's strange that we've never had any direct confrontations like this one. 
Our relationship was like an unstable bomb, but I always managed to prevent it from going off. But today was different. Well, it was bound to happen sooner or later. I try to slow down my breathing. Lucy calls out to me cautiously. What is it? I wonder what she means by all right. Nothing's all right. But I know what she meant. So I give a small nod anyway. With a wet handkerchief from who knows where, Lucy wipes down my sweaty forehead. The fruity smell of her perfume is surprisingly cold. My face quickly becomes contorted with anger. What the heck? Are you telling me I'm a bad person? Lucy shakes her head. Yeah, I know, I know, I know that line, you know. Oh. You don't think that I'm bad, huh? When you're the one telling me that it's my fault entirely. I was the one hurt. And he was the one who hurt me. My head's aching. Drop it and leave me alone. It's not acting my way. Lucy had been squirming about. It was completely still. Both her eyes suddenly lose their color. After a while, she springs back to life. If you don't apologize, there will be repercussions. That's what you're saying. Your explanations don't make sense, and you're calling it logical? You wouldn't understand a thing anyway! What can you possibly tell from watching us for just five minutes? What did you exactly find out about us? How can you say something so ignorant without knowing about it, knowing anything about the past 18 years we've spent together? The android tilts his head, looking confused. Answer this. 
How many minutes are there in a day? How many in a year? Never know that either. Then what about 18 years? Yeah, that's a silly question. As expected from a robot, her calculations are quick and accurate. How the out of the nine point four million minutes I've spent with my father, I'm sticking with that. Out of the nine point four million minutes I've spent with my father, you've only seen five. That's less than point zero 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 one percent an insignificant amount it's my fault that you had to witness something like this but that man is always finding the smallest excuses to teach me things that only he he himself believes think of it as throwing out an entire pan of pizza because a single burnt piece of pepperoni Where's the logic in that? Lucy's eyes lose their focus. Just like before. Could she be looking up inside? Could she be looking up something inside her memory chip again? Or maybe she's doing a search online. She returns after a moment. He finds fault in everything, so therefore, yeah, that really does get irritating. I figured as much. Cause and effect. The universe operates on this principle. If a father neglects, neglects his son, then of course the son would neglect his father in return. Who's at a bigger fault here? to be brooding over something after while she finally speaks up again. Then why should I be the one apologizing? I'm not the bad guy here. Shouldn't the old guy be more mature and understanding? I'm a high school student. I do stuff on impulse. Do you get what I mean by that? That's what they do on some anime, not in real life. In some places, maybe, but not, in, but not so very often. Kind of exaggerated, but as long as she gets my point. Yeah. I'm one of those kids these days that adults are always going on about. It's natural that I have trouble controlling my emotions, so don't expect much from me. To be honest, I do think that I'm more 
I'm way more mature than the other kids my age. This is all irrelevant though. I'm sure anyone would take their family matters very seriously. Yeah, because he's, a, he's, he's stubborn. How do you know? <laughs> you learned so much from meeting him for just a few minutes. You're really impressive with telling you. Sources? What kind of sources? Wikipedia? Reddit? 4chan? Wait. Did 4chan ever come in, up into this? Ignoring my outbursts, Lucy continues. Okay, and... By the way... If you want to make up with my father, that means I'll have to throw you out. He's not the type of person to make any compromises. Have you even realized this? <laughs> I guess not. Don't ask me. Why don't you think before you talk next time? shake my head. The reason behind this mess is uh, the reason behind this mess of a conversation is the fact that I'm talking to a robot. That's better than talking to nobody else, you know. Sometimes I forget that she's a robot in the first place. And sometimes it's reversed when where I end up deliberately pointing out her flaws as a robot. And then everything in my head gets mixed up. If this robot really knows how to stress people out, Yes, story. We get the point. We get the point, story. Thank you for pointing this out for like the fourth, maybe fifth time already in this in this novel. <laughs> May eleventh, Doctor. <sighs> Here we go again. Lucy. Lucy. Lucy Valentine. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Lucy Valentine.
recognize who I am. Lucy slowly shakes her head. Still so. I continue. I'm Dr. Ryu. Well now, and this is the K-Robotics Research Lab. If I was playing this in Korean, it'd be, um, Bayek. So, you know, just letting you know. Of course, I'm playing this in Jap Japanese, so names are changed. Yes, Dr. Ryu. I am your creator. Yes. Short flashback. And we're back here to October 14th. My body is being shaken from side to side. Something is shaking my body. What do you want? Still feeling drowsy, I try my hardest to overcome the weight of my drooping eyelids. I finally managed to force my eyes open. And right before me was a pair of blue eyes the size of frying pans. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save here, like so. And in the next part, wow, that was <laughs> that was pretty loud. But um, in the next part, we're going to continue this. So. In our next part, we're going to see what develops after the fact that we had one hell of a fight between um, my character's father and 
and me as my main me as the main character. So stay tuned. More of Lucy, the eternity she wished for, right after this. <laughs> 